So uh, I was asked to talk about the contact jellyfish filter that we installed in Edwards Road recently. Um, it was a solution that, you know, fit our needs and something that we came to kind of slowly. So I'll give you a little, little background on it. So the Neponset Reservoir, which is where it was connected, a um, little bit of history there. Um, it was built by the Neponset Reservoir Company, uh, which was formed, you know, about in the mid 1800s. And uh, the purpose of the reservoir isn't for drinking water supply. It was constructed to supply the mills downstream uh, a consistent, uh, you know, power source. So in case there was a drought or something, they still had a, you know, a constant flow of water to provide themselves. Um, so like many people, um, they hear reservoir, they think water, you know, or think drinking water. But in this case, it wasn't specifically the case. It was in an industrial use. Um, total area from what I could find is about 314 acres. Um, I saw varying figures on that, so don't hold me to that. Um, I also heard someone say that it is the largest body of water in Norfolk County. I don't know if that's true. Um, it was from a meeting in 1980 something. So, I mean, that may have certainly changed since then. <laughs> um, uh, so our primary partner on this was NR NRRC Incorporated, um, which is a nonprofit, which was formed through a settlement with the town of Foxborough um, through uh, the private industries that were kind of responsible for um, polluting the Neponset Reservoir um, in a big way. That, that's my understanding. Um, so that money was, um, you know, set aside and this nonprofit was established with the purpose of, um, you know, uh, mo monitoring and uh, improving the water quality at the reservoir. Um, so they, um, they're they actually the ones who initiated the project and kind of partnered with us through there. Um, but, you know, they, they conduct weekly level wa water level monitoring and routine sampling down there. Um, uh, some people, there's a little bit of debate in the name, you know, the it, some people call it Neponza Reservoir Reclamation Committee, but I frequently keep saying the Neponza Reservoir Restoration Committee. Um, I'm not sure which it is because legally it's registered as NRRC Inc. And that's just, that is the legal name. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So you can make it, you can choose your own, I guess. Um, so project history. So Edward, Edwards Road, where this was installed, the boat ramp there. Um, I guess my understanding is that uh, for a long time, it was kind of just this informal sort of little place where people could launch their, you know, kayaks and canoes. Um, and the... NRC wanted to uh, improve it. Uh, so in the picture on the right here, you can kind of see the improved um, look of the, uh, the boat launch area now. Um, the problem being just to the right side of this boat ramp um, is, uh, you know, what uh, the ponds at Reservoir Restoration Committee found to be, you know, the most, uh, you know, the worst discharge point in terms of nutrient loading on the reservoir. So in coordination, you know, in connection to this project, they wanted to also find a way to improve the water quality coming out of that discharge point. Um, so they, with the help of ESS group and other design engineer firms, they started looking into various solutions on how to address that. Um, you know, one of the things they considered was construction of a gravel wetland, um, uh, but due to the limited land area um, they had available, um, it wasn't really going to provide the treatment that they were looking for. Uh, which you can see from the table here, um, you know, it's, uh, this was done by ESS. Um, they're kind of comparing the two options here. So you have, you know, impervious area treated by the jellyfish filter, 2.87 acres. You know, meanwhile, the gravel wetland is 0.2 acres, you know, impervious area treated by their comparison. Um, and uh, clearing required for the jellyfish filter is none. We installed in the street whereas they would have to clear about 0.15 acres just to achieve that minimal treatment. Um, so event, eventually they, you know, the problem was, you know, it was, a, it was a hesitant decision to go with the jellyfish filter only because it was significant cost kind of associated with that. You know, my understanding is that the, uh, you know, the delivered price of the jellyfish fish filter was somewhere around $120,000. Um, so it's not a cheap option, you know. So if you can you know, if they could do the wetland, gravel wetland, it was technically a more, you know, at least initially cheaper financial option from what they were seeing. But ultimately, because of the size limitations um, and the treatment, you know, limited treatment offered, they, they went with the jellyfish filter. Um, so 
I'm going to, rather than try to explain to you exactly how it works, I found this nice video. Um, I'm going to hit play on this. Let me know if you guys can hear the audio because uh, I don't know if this always works. So I'm going to hit play. Can you hear it? With increasingly stringent stormwater management regulations, finding a stormwater treatment solution that is effective and efficient is more challenging than ever. Contact Engineered Solutions introduces the Jellyfish Filter, an engineered stormwater treatment technology featuring pretreatment and membrane filtration in a compact system. The Jellyfish Filter removes a high level and a wide variety of stormwater pollutants, such as fine particulates. Water is pushed down to the treatment chamber, where a separation skirt around the cartridges traps oil, trash, and debris outside the filtration zone and allows sand-sized particles to settle below the cartridges in the sump. Water is forced up from the treatment chamber through membrane filtration and into the backwash pool. Once the water has filled the backwash pool, water overflows the weir and exits via the outlet pipe. The high-performance membrane filtration provided by the jellyfish filter's pleated tentacles ensures long-lasting treatment and provides a large surface area to effectively remove fine sand and silt-sized particles and a high percentage of particulate-bound pollutants such as nitrogen, phosphorus, metals, and hydrocarbons. As each storm subsides, the treated water caught in the backwash pool flows back into the treatment chamber through the membrane cartridges. This passive backwash extends cartridge life and keeps them clear for future events. The drain down cartridge located outside the backwash pool enables water levels to balance. The jellyfish filter can be used in a number of applications, including commercial and residential development, infill and redevelopment, and stormwater quality retrofit projects, highways, airports, seaports, and military installations, pre-treatment for low-impact development, infiltration, and rainwater harvesting, and reuse systems. The jellyfish filter is available in standard manhole, catch basin, and vault configurations, as well as custom-engineered configurations. Maintenance of the jellyfish filter is performed by removing, rinsing, and reusing the cartridge tentacles. Vacuum extraction of captured pollutants in the sump is recommended at the same time. Full cartridge replacement intervals differ by site due to varying pollutant loading and type. Typically, replacement is anticipated every two to five years. Third-party field testing for the jellyfish filter has been conducted following the TARP Tier 2 protocol. The jellyfish filter has achieved numerous agency approvals, including New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection final certification and Washington State Department of Ecology conditional use level designation. Please visit www.contactes.com slash jellyfish for more information on jellyfish, including technical information and a collection of case studies. The jellyfish filter, an innovative solution to stormwater treatment. There you go. I promise I'm not working for them or trying to sell it to you, but I felt that was the uh, most efficient way to sort of give you that nice graphic to see how the water actually flows through the system, you know, to the bottom, then up out and uh, back out. So because it's a bit, you know, when you're looking at it in the field, it does get a little confusing when you see this thing being constructed. But, uh, you know, oh, don't want that. I want to go next. There we go. <laughs> Um, so on the construction, I put some images together of you know what we did here. Um, on the left, you see an image of the vault area and uh, you know the you know where we constructed originally was proposed. You can kind of see uh, the circular area of the old design. Um, we ended up going with more uh, the rectangular vault design. Um, so that's what you see right. And we used the slide rails uh, sheathing to you know as protection. Um, um, so you can see them, it was an interesting process seeing them dig that out and pound that in. And then, you know, this is them just putting stone at the bottom, prepping the site uh, for the, the base. Here's the bottom of the unit. Um, they're putting the bituminous adhesive there for water tightness. Um, there's the crane. They had to come bring a crane in to drop it down in there because this thing was pretty deep. 
And there's the second layer, again, with the bituminous adhesive. And, uh, and there's the top and uh, the riser. So we didn't put all the risers on right away. We uh, put the, they put the manhole covers on there for a little while just to cover it. But, you know, they put all the risers on at the end. And then we used uh, flowable fill and, uh, you know, removed part of the, uh, the slide rail system um, once we got some of the flowable fill in there to brace the sides. Um, now to tie it into the um, existing outfall drain line, um, we had to tap into that and we actually used the existing pipe coming out of the, uh, the manhole there and built a manhole around that. So we used that as the base of that pipe as the invert. And uh, on the right side, you can see the, uh, the uh, you know, precast concrete frame for the, uh, the new manhole that was going to go over that. Um, then this is them pouring concrete on the sides for the new base, new sides there and the manhole itself. And then, uh, you know, they're pouring a little flowable fill around the sides. And what you can see here is um, on this left picture, you kind of see the existing manhole on the back left side. Um, the uh, jellyfish filter vault on the right side. And then the new manhole is sort of on the bottom left corner. Um, so that's kind of the configuration. So, I mean, that's, so we kind of added those two structures to make this all work. And on the right, you see it all kind of filled in with flowable fill. Um, then, now you can see it's kind of all nicely paved here. So we had to wait a little while for the uh, licensed installer to come out and actually install the filters. But you can see them standing there. Um, they're interesting, you know, uh, you know, textured, tall. Um, you know, you can see the caps in the right picture that screw on top. Um, but yeah, they, and they go down in there and, uh, you know, they, they install them one by one and lock the caps in on the top. Um, didn't take very long once they were there. Um, and then now you can see sort of the finished product on the left side, a nice clean cut pavement and uh, the water flowing through the system. Um, so the anticipated maintenance cost of this, you know, from what we've been told, is you know roughly for year one, so we, we just put this in, so we haven't even passed the year one maintenance yet. It's about sixteen hundred dollars for the routine inspection and maintenance. Year two, same thing. Year three, you're going to do a, a vacuuming of the uh, sediment on the bottom, so it's a little additional money. Year four, uh, same as one and two, and then by year five, you're supposed to uh, replace the cartridges, which is a significant cost. Um, and then you repeat the five year cycle is what's recommended. Um, we had a lot of filters in this, so we're, you know, we're trying to provide a lot of treatment. I think there's smaller ones out there. It's probably cheaper to maintain. Um, but it is kind of a costly, um, you know, BMP, but, you know, it does provide a lot of bang in terms of, you know, size. It's relatively compact. You're getting a lot of treatment out of it. Um, well that's, that's everything. That's all I got. So if anyone has any questions, please, by all means, let me know.